Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Now, as I consider the current state of our nation, I have no doubt that the sinful seeds that have been sown into the soil of our society are producing the rotten, fleshly fruits, which was the inevitable outcome. And the reason I say this is based on the principle that Paul presented in Galatians chapter 6. It's there where he declares, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now, as we consider this principle of sowing and reaping, we must not fail to realize that the sinful seeds that are sown will always produce the fleshly fruits that result in corruption. Therefore, it only stands to reason that the nation that sows sinful seeds into the soil of its own society, this nation ends up reaping the rotten fruit that creates widespread corruption throughout the country. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening here in the USA. For example, it was just yesterday morning, that's when a 14-year-old student there in Georgia, he went on a shooting spree at his own high school, resulting in the death of at least four people. Not only that, but according to the reports, at least 30 others were injured. And while Kamala Harris was quick to use this tragedy to address the so-called epidemic of gun violence. Listen, those who have an inkling of common sense will quickly realize that guns are inanimate objects and therefore can only pose a threat when an unstable individual decides to use a weapon with nefarious intent. What this also means, then, is that the U.S. is not suffering from an epidemic of gun violence. No, instead, we're suffering from a mental health crisis, which stems from the fact that most people plant the sinful seeds of their own depraved desires into the soil of their own hearts. And as we consider how this impacts the entire society, well, then, what we have, then, are spiritually dead people, people who are dead in sins and trespasses, developing an unhealthy worldview, which leads them to act upon evil desires. Case in point, it was just last month. That's when a New Mexico man reportedly swerved his car towards a pro-life activist who was engaging in an outreach at an abortion center there in Albuquerque. Now we have to ask, what in the world would lead a man to seemingly attempt to run down another human being just over a difference of opinion regarding abortion and when life begins? Clearly, that New Mexico man, who has since been charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, well, he allowed his pro-abortion perspective to affect his mental health, which led him to allegedly try to run over another human being. I should also remind you that it was last November when a 26-year-old man named Hans Schmidt, he was preaching the gospel in the public square found in Glendale, Arizona. And he, as he was sharing the good news of Christ Jesus, that's when a car pulled up near him and, and shot him in the head. Schmidt, who served our country as a military combat medic, he was rushed to the hospital, uh, and it was there at the hospital where he was placed on life support in a medically induced coma, and for no other reason than because someone was triggered by the gospel message of grace. Thankfully, the prayers of many were answered as Schmidt then ended up walking out of that hospital just this past January. And while there are still bullet fragments lodged in his brain, Schmidt has since returned to that same street corner where he continues sharing his testimony about the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sadly, that shooter is still at large, and so we should not only pray for the continuing recovery of Hans Schmidt, but we should also pray for the capture and the conviction of the shooter. And at the same time, we should also realize that this is uh, just one more example of the fact that the sinful seeds that our nation has sown into the soil of this society continues producing the rotten fruits of unrighteousness as Christians like Hans Schmidt continue to be persecuted. More recently, it was two days ago on Tuesday, September the 3rd, that's when a crazed gunman emptied an entire magazine of bullets into the property of a pastor named Greg Locke. This controversial pastor of Global Vision Bible Church, he vocally supports Trump and, and, and you know, he's received many death threats over the years and, and yet... This is actually the first time that a mentally unhinged individual showed up at his house with murderous intent. Thankfully, no one was hurt during this horrific attack on the Locke residence, and yet it should be noted that one of the bullets cut through the headboard of their youngest daughter's bed and ended up lodging in her pillow. 
Now, how twisted do you have to be to blindly fire more than 30 rounds into a home where children could be killed? As we consider these people who, you know, pick up a gun and then decide to use them to commit these sorts of crimes, we must understand that the problem isn't the gun. The problem is that we live in a society that actually celebrates sin and therefore hates Christianity. And you better believe that the society that celebrates sin is going to produce people who choose to act upon these sinful desires that are being celebrated. And as a result, well, we should expect to see the persecution of Christians continuing to increase here in our country. And listen, we shouldn't be surprised by any of this because this was precisely the sort of society that Paul described in a prophecy that he presented in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's there where he declares, Know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Now, according to Paul, the last days will be perilous times, which is to say that the world is going to be a very dangerous place. And the reason why, according to Paul, is because people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. According to Paul, people will become narcissistic hedonists who love themselves above all things. As a result, there will be those who will become brutal as they despise what is good. And not only that, but they will also be uh, unable to control their anger whenever they're confronted by those who call them out about their sins. And as we consider this prophetic description of the last days, well, I have no doubt that we're watching all of this unfolding and right before our very eyes. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and it's sad to say that the sinful deeds that have been, uh, or the sinful seeds, I should say, that have been sown into the soil of our society are now producing the rotten fruits of unrighteousness here in the United States of America. And according to the reports, most third world countries don't have as much theft and violence as the U.S. Here's how Michael Snyder recently explained it in his article that he titled, Even Most Third World Countries Do Not Have As Much Theft and Violence As We Do. According to Snyder's research, most third world nations actually have lower crime rates than we do here in America, and more violent gang uh, members just keep pouring into this country with each passing day. At this stage, he says, gang members far outnumber the police in many of our largest cities. So what is going to happen if economic conditions become extremely harsh and social order starts to break down on a widespread basis? We are literally in the process of committing national suicide, but our leaders in Washington have no intention of changing course. That's right. He's exactly right. And as we consider this bleak situation, I encourage every Christian to realize that we're living in one of the most exciting, incredible times that has ever been witnessed. Think about it. We're not only watching the persecution of Christians ramping up here in the USA, but we're also watching the great apostasy causing many to fall away from the faith as more and more churches embrace the doctrines of demons. And as the mystery of lawlessness continues to affect our American society, these signs of the times are clear evidence that the rapture of the church is on the horizon. With that being the case, I encourage every Christian, we ought to seek the courage of Christ Jesus so that we can become those believers who are making an impact on the people who are within our sphere of influence. And being that the Lord Jesus is the only Savior of sinners, then we ought to preach the gospel of grace here in these last days so that the unbelievers around us might repent of their corruption and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And in this way, the Lord will help us to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.